with the constraint, we've talked about this, you sometimes feel handcuffed because Star Wars is lightsabers and stormtroopers and TIE fighters. And if you don't have that, people are going to complain. Right. But, as we've seen now... You can get away with You can make it work. You with can. a little f***ing creativity and some effort, you can you make, can it, make work. it work. It turns out you can no longer single people out for being fat. Why not? You just can't. Now you have to make fun of their nutritional condition. <laughs> I have a severe nutritional condition. Yeah. <laughs> the hospital, this is a diversion, but the hospital, they weren't sure how to, they don't want to call people obese or overweight or shit like that anymore. So they came up with people of size. So all our notes are written as POS. <laughs> this guy's a person of size. This guy's a piece of shit. So we need <laughs> to rethink that, POS. don't we? No, no. Keep it's it. Brilliant. It's brilliant. I love it. That's... Welcome to Two Gaming Dudes Visions Season 2. Yes. Click subscribe right now. Um, I liked it better than than Season 1. I liked volume. it a lot better than Season 1. And this... I, I don't mean to like offend anime fans. The anime stuff is fine, but I, I didn't really... I, I grew up on this kind of cartoon. You know, I, I grew up with... Uh, with the Spielberg stuff and Don Bluth and, and you know, Western animation. Okay. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all that kind of stuff. So I, I prefer this kind of storytelling. And, and I really liked these stories better than the first season. I, I half agree with you. The stories were better. Yes. A, a lot of the animations, uh, stylistically, I really questioned why they were drawn that way. Okay. Um, like, for example, the, the last one, Aou's Song, was fucking incredible. What a magnificent, compelling story to tell in the Star Wars universe. And it's just drawn so stupidly that it takes you out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get, okay, creative choices, all that shit, but it's, yeah. it's done so childishly that it, it, it ruins your suspension of disbelief because it's drawn so dumb. You're talking about suffering kyber crystals... That, that wasn't the right visual tone for it. It was a weird visual tone for that story, yeah. wasn't it? And I, I had some problems with a lot of the a lot of the stylistic the, choices. The that first one with the paint. Oh, it's fucking that weird. Was, that was so cool. Cool? It was I stupid as fuck. That. It made no sense at all. I loved it. Why would you bother doing she, that? It, it was about her perspective and how she saw things in color and how the other guy was trying to take all that color away from her. And I, I don't know, there was, I really liked that artistic, but at the same time, that one made me nervous. <laughs> you thought they were all going to be yeah, really I was like, like that? Are we going to go crazy artistic on all of them? Because I can handle it for this little five minute cartoon, but yeah. don't go beyond that. And thankfully they didn't. They, with a couple of them, that they one. made a bad choice. But for the most part, I was mostly okay with it. I liked that one. I liked the one with the dancer. Yes. I thought that was really good. The, the, the spy dancer. Yeah. That was such a play on 1940s and 50s film noir. I don't know that you got the reference, but this was this was French resistance fighting the Nazis. Okay. But you would have a club and German troops would come in and the girls would flirt with the troops and they would give up secrets. And then the waitress would feed those secrets to the French resistance. That was a direct play on those... Those film noirs of those days. Like, that's cool. That's beautiful. I caught that right away, and it was great. The 14-year-old that I was watching this with, uh, he was a big fan of the one... Uh, I gotta remember which one it was now. It was the one... Uh, shit, I can't remember any of the things I saw now. Two hours later. Oh, it was the one where, with the cave. The the kids go to the creepy cave because they think it's haunted and there's a ghost in Screechers, there. Screechers Reach. Yeah. Yeah. He liked that one because he's like, you see all these things about how the Jedi are found and all yeah. that, but you never really see how the Sith are found. Hmm. So yeah. he liked that. He liked how, seeing how Sith people are, are found and recruited. And... Yeah, most of them were was pretty clever. a bit of a throwaway. I, I loved, loved the pit where they're using slaves to mine the kyber crystal oh, and then they yeah. just abandon them there to die. That was a really cool, like, modern social commentary. Yeah. Because that's how, you know, the battery in your phone was mined by African slaves. I try like, not to think about it, Modern day yes. African slaves were... <laughs> warlords moved into Somalia, took an entire village and said, 
all right, start digging. Yep. And they shot the first guy to say no. And and that way we in America can have these cool phones. Um, and yeah, and every tech company is complicit in it. Because it all makes its way to the same supply chain. Yeah. Whether it's mined ethically or not. Anyway, that, that's not the point. Um, I loved that one a lot. And I, I loved uh, the bandits. Bandits of Goku or Goku or whatever the hell. The two kids on the train. Oh, yeah, yeah. The I liked that one a lot. Um, the problem is, these are basically, basically fan fictions that you find yes. on YouTube. When you only have 19 or 20 minutes, you're not going to be able to flesh out a proper story. No, no. You, some of them are really, really short. So yeah. you just have to tell your story as quickly as possible. And you they, have, they and you, you know, simple ideas. You have just enough time to establish this is the good guy, this is the bad guy, and that would karate fight. <laughs> That's all you really have. And right, that one, yeah. the bandits didn't follow that. And it was the closest I came to a true emotional moment. Like, wow, that you're seeing what it really means to, to choose this lifestyle and to sacrifice everything you've ever known. We've kind of seen hints of it, but it, I, I would have loved to have seen that fleshed out into a proper 90-minute something. The one that I was... I didn't hate it. I, I still loved it. I thought it was very funny, but the, I was kind of disappointed in was the one from Ardman Studios. Which one? Uh, he's the guy that made Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> and so all the animation was very, very Wallace and Gromit. And I the racer, loved... The race? Yeah, the one okay. with the race, yeah. It was clearly very silly, but it's fine to throw am... the silly one in there and then continue on with the rest, because we'd been pretty serious up to yeah. this point, so... I am your mother. Yes. Yeah. That was um, the one. But it was but, fun. Yeah. So, Wallace and Gromit, Chicken Run, uh, Shaun, Shaun the, the Sheep... sheep yeah. They have a certain style and a certain way that they tell stories, and it always gets like crazy, grandiose, epic towards the end. And so I was hoping for that in this little story, but uh, maybe the timing—it was just too short. Or I was trying I to. Know, it was good, but it, it wasn't quite what I was hoping for from them. It, it was fine because I wasn't expecting much of anything from any of them. That's because true. you hated the first season. Yeah, I really did. Because it was <laughs> fucking stupid. It was, let's just take every fucking anime cliche and throw it all into every episode. And it was just the same recurgitated bullshit over and over and over again for eight fucking episodes. The exact same fucking samurai bullshit. Fuck off. Somebody <laughs> in the board office should have fucking said, submit your story ideas to us first. They didn't. They just said, give us your take on anime Star Wars. And everyone said, oh, Samurai. Yes, every single one of them. And it made Fuck you think, man. is this really the only story you have to tell? This is it, huh? Oh, all right. Uh, I, I had to look it up, of course. I, I know all of these animation studios, but I don't like know them by yeah. name. But if you take a moment and just do a quick Google search, you'll see all the studios and all the things that they've worked on. And it's really impressive uh, and, and really surprising. Like, the one with the dancer, I, I, people who worked on that worked on Adventure Time. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Sure, why not? Uh, the one that you really liked with the pit, the people that worked on that worked on Avatar The Last Airbender. Hmm. So they are Me. capable of good work. Yeah. When they want to. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your hate comments down below. I don't give a shit. You're a dipshit if you like it. I don't fucking care. <laughs> um... It was perfectly good that I, I'm perfectly happy to enjoy these short 20-minute snippets mm -hmm. that are really fan fiction, just kind of throw away. You're not going to see any references to this in the new Ray movie. No. <laughs> or in and, anything. And I'll tell you what, it's the one thing that I probably like the most about these little stories is not a single one of them had anything to do with Ray or Skywalker or any of that main storyline shit. You told new stories. Yeah. You proved, hey, guess what? The galaxy is actually bigger than 12 people. I don't need that Marvel, Disney, 40 Easter egg bullshit. Yes. That they feel compelled to do for some reason. Here's I don't need it. Totally original characters that have nothing to do with anything. Yeah. And it's still interesting. That was well done. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, overall pretty happy with it. Other than one or two times where I said, oh, God, why did they draw it like that? Beyond that, I, I, I really enjoyed the stories. Uh, it, it also made me realize how much 
I appreciated that first season of The Mandalorian and or why I did. Yeah. Because I didn't know any of these people. It was new. It was new. And now, of course, every single episode is a cameo and an Easter egg and... And a setup some, for the next show. Yes. And some reference to some other bigger Star Wars thing of established characters. Yeah. You couldn't just give me something new. You had to dive back into Rebels and Clone Wars and all the stuff that we've done before. And That's yep. the Disney way now. That's how Marvel, Marvel paved the way and Disney just picked up that playbook and they're going to apply it to everything they fucking do now. Yeah. It's pretty awful. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and it's unnecessary. Yes. You have an entire galaxy. It, it may as well be a multiverse. Yeah. When you're talking numbers that big, it may as well be a multiverse. You can tell any story in any genre that you want, and it will fit into Star Wars. Yep. With the constraint, we've talked about this, you sometimes feel handcuffed because Star Wars is lightsabers and stormtroopers and TIE fighters. And if you don't have that, people are going to complain. Right. But, as we've seen now... You can get away with You can make it work. You with can. a little fucking creativity and some effort, you can you make, can it, make work. it work. Of course, there's the rub now, isn't it? Effort. Oh, Effort. Creativity. Uh, That's gay. What the fuck? Yeah. But now all I have to do is go to chat GPT and <laughs> give me Star Wars script, and it does. <laughs> damn it. How much longer of this writer's strike before they start resorting to that? Oh, it's not going to If it hasn't happened already. If it's part of the writer's strike, is they're like, by the way, stop with the AI shit, please. Sounds fair. Whatever. Anyway. Topic for another conversation. I like this a lot. Leave some comments down below. Let us know what you thought of this episode or this series uh, in general. Did you like this? Are you looking forward to Visions 3? Because you know they're going to do that. I mean, why not? It didn't cost them anything. It's true. Disney didn't have to do anything. Lucas didn't have to do anything other than say, here, we're going to give you a license. You guys want to make a Star Wars thing? Don't tell us anything about it. you You have free license to any of our creative properties. Just see what you come up with. Oh, great. (laughs) <laughs> That's as much as their investment was, so yeah. why not? They couldn't do that with other studios doing other Star Wars things. If only. Make a whole series. I think that's actually how Andor happened, isn't it? I don't know. Basically? I don't know. I No, I think that was an in-house. Well, yeah, but I mean, he had a lot more creative freedom than... They left him alone, yeah. Because it was just some guy. Because they, they were in the exact... Some exec asked, oh, and who's Cassie and Andor? Oh, you know, he's um, one of the characters in that movie Rogue One. Like, oh, so you're making a story, so like Luke and Vader aren't in it? Well, it's not really no. that kind of story. Just fucking go ahead, I don't care. It's not one of our legacy money-making properties. Just fucking go, Whatever. make your stupid little show. <laughs> this is beneath me. Make your stupid little show. And they left him alone to make something fantastic. Yeah. And hopefully they leave him alone to continue making shit that's fantastic. We shall see. All right. You know what to do. Subscribe, like, all that. Do that. And we'll see you in another episode. Bye. Bye.